Hey guys, Anthony here. It is Saturday, August 6th, 2022. Um, today's devotional is taken from Psalm 143. And I spent some time this week in my uh, morning Bible study, in my morning devotional time, my morning prayer time, uh, just to ponder and meditate on this psalm. And I wrote down some notes that I want to uh, talk about as we read through this psalm. It's uh, 12 verses, Psalm 143. It's a psalm of David. And um, I think it's especially, especially uh, relevant today being in the times that we're in right now where many people are looking for uh, answers to many problems that we have in this world. We have problems of war and rumors of war. We have nations rising up against nation. We have unrest. We have natural disasters. We have plagues. We have diseases. We have famine. Uh, we have drought. Um, it just seems like the barrage of, of shrapnel that's hitting us is constant and it's unceasing and if you read in Matthew chapter 24 Yahusha Jesus has given us his words regarding these days that we're in and he describes them very clearly uh, to us and so um, like so many millions and and billions of people today, really, because um, the Bible says the whole world, meaning many, many, most of the people, will follow the path of uh, the evil one, uh, the one that is temporarily allowed uh, to, to rule uh, this world. Um, he doesn't rule it in the sense that he usurped it from uh, Yah, he rules it in the sense that he's allowed to rule it, and this is allowed to play out, and it has to play out. But everything is according to Yahuwah's plan. And that's what we have to understand as we go through these terrible times uh, that we're in today. Um, and so let's read uh, Psalm uh, 143, verse by verse, and I'll just give a few comments on it. And in the comment section, feel free to elaborate on some of the issues, problems you may be having, uh, maybe you're having concern, uh, questioning your faith, questioning with ro what road uh, you're going down. Um, you know, many families are at, uh, there's a lot of dissension in many families due to what has taken place over the last, specifically over the last two plus years. Um, I'm not going to mention anything specific in this video, but there's been many things that have happened that have caused dissension and conflict within families. And the Bible even talks about that, that mother, father, brother, sister uh, will come against each other in the last days. And so David starts out this psalm with, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in thy faithfulness, answer me, and in thy righteousness. So David is starting off with a plea to Yahuwah uh, to hear his prayer, uh, to give ear to my supplications, to, you know, give ear to what I'm crying out to you today, Father. And in thy faithfulness, answer me. So he's looking for answers. He's asking in faith and looking for answers. And in thy righteousness, not his righteousness, uh, his human righteousness, but he's asking in the Father's righteousness. Uh, verse 2. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Um, and that's exactly true. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, and the Bible specifically tells us, uh, Paul tells us in Romans 3.10, that there's no one righteous, not even one. And Paul didn't just make that up willy-nilly. He had the, um, the, um, the covenant, the old covenant, um, the Old Testament, 
as his Bible, and he was quoting probably from Ecclesiastes 7.20 or, uh, or Psalm 53, 1 through 3, um, that no one is righteous, not even one. No one in their, in their own power is righteous. We need the righteousness of the Almighty. Um, verse 3, For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, and hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me dwell in darkness, as those that have been long dead. Uh, the enemy definitely is persecuting many souls uh, today. Uh, he's smitten the lives or crushed the lives of many today uh, and hath made many dwell in darkness. And he does that uh, through uh, his indwelling, his possession, his influence over man, uh, over those that rule uh, this world, those that many of us never see or know about, uh, that are doing the works of, of Satan. And so uh, David is asking uh, Yahuwah uh, for solace, uh, that the, he knows the enemy's persecuting his soul, and he knows there's trouble around him. Uh, in verse 4 he says, Therefore, so therefore because of this, because of the enemy persecuting me, my soul, and smittening my life down to the ground, and made me dwell, making me dwell in darkness, because of this, verse 4, is my spirit overwhelmed within me, and my heart, my heart within me is, is desolate. Um, and so there's so many people in this situation today. I know it, I can feel it when I see people. They don't even have to tell me what's going on many and many of you might have been having the same experiences where uh, you just feel the the hurt and the overwhelm that people are just overwhelmed with grief or this this dread that's just hanging on to them and it's because they haven't freed themselves up by giving themselves over to the almighty to hear their prayer to hear their cries uh, maybe they're just being stubborn or they're they're just not they're just relying too much on their own strength. And so David is just pouring out his heart uh, to uh, the Almighty. Verse 5, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse or I ponder uh, on the work of thy hands. Um, so David is looking back and, and understanding that the Almighty is the Creator. The Almighty has set forth this this earth, and has created everything that is around Him, and has given Him this great responsibility and these great powers. But they come with a price, um, and He's meditating on all the works that the Almighty has done, and He's pondering all this. And that is what uh, we should be doing: understanding that the everything that we see around us as a product of creation. Everything, the, the air, the atmosphere, the clouds, the sun, the moon, the stars have all been placed like a, like a great timepiece. This isn't really a great example, but uh, a great timepiece that has all these inner workings clicking together and moving that timepiece. Just so many pieces that have been put together to make this one thing. David's, think about David's pondering all this the works of thy hands. And we could sit there and ponder this uh, for the rest of our lives and really not fully comprehend it, how great and vast uh, that his, the Almighty's works are. Verse 6, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. The psalmist, David, takes action by physically stretching out his hands to thee. Um, and how often... Do we physically stretch out our hands up to the Almighty and say, please, please, Father, help me. Give me answers. Give me strength. Give me courage. Give me the ability to stand. Give me a voice to speak up when I have to. Uh, give me eyes to observe what's going on and take in what's actually happening and be able to sift through all the lies 
that are being put out there day in and day out in people's minds and brainwashing people to follow this path, this narrow path, uh, this wide path rather, that leads to destruction rather than this narrow path that only a few find. So he's stretching out his, his arms to uh, Yahuwah. Verse 7, Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. The psalmist asks that Yahuwah hear his prayer now, speedily. Hear my prayer. It's urgent. I want to hear an answer. Hear my prayer. I'm pouring out my heart and soul to you. My spirit is failing. This may be because of his enemy's persecution. And so many of us have seen that today. Uh, the persecution is endless. The barrage of assaults on liberty, on speech, on everything that is right, true, and just seems to be cast aside and everything that is filthy, dirty, despicable, abhorrent is placed on a pedestal today and being forced in our faces. And that's being done for a reason. It's not being done by accident. It's not just happening. Governors and leaders and mayors in our country here and around the world are doing it because there is an agenda, an evil agenda, and they are working for the evil one. Make no mistake about it. It doesn't matter where you go in this world today. There's a collective there's a collective mindset amongst leadership today, uh, corporations today, many corporations, not all, but many, um, even in the clergy, even in, in, in the so-called church, the denominations. There's a giving over to this evil, and there's an agenda being pushed, and the rise of the false prophets will be here, because Jesus, Yahusha, Jesus tells us in Matthew, that many will rise and say they are, uh, I am Messiah, I am the Christ, I am uh, the one, perform all these good signs or miracles, if you will, and many will believe them, okay? So there's so much going on, and we could just hear it in David's spirit in, in, uh, that he wants answers speedily. Uh, verse 8. Also, let me touch on Go back to verse 7 where he says, I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Once, uh, once you die, there is no more prayer for you. Once you die, you go to sleep. There's no more prayer. It is now, while you have breath in your lungs, that you could lift your hands to the Almighty and ask Him through His Son, Yahusha, to give you direction and guidance and free you up from the bondage that you are in right now. Verse 8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Wow. So David's pleading with Yahuwah to, to have loving kindness towards him. To have this mercy towards him. Um. Not giving him what he deserves, but having mercy, laying himself out in the open uh, to Yahuwah in the morning. And that's primarily when I study. And many of you probably do the same. It's quiet. Many of the birds are not up yet. Everything is still. Your mind is fresh from uh, a night of sleep. Um, and you could just sense, uh, you could just sense the presence and at least I can. I could just sense the presence of, of Yahuwah um, in the morning. And the psalmist states that this is when he makes his prayers uh, to the Most High. And he asks Yahuwah to direct his paths, cause me to know the ways wherein. So he's asking um, for direction, for guidance. Um, 
His soul that's being persecuted by the enemy is now an offering to Yahuwah. He's offer our souls, offer ourselves to Yahuwah. And David was known as a, God, a man after uh, Elohim's own heart, after God's own heart. Um, was, was that because he had this special righteousness in him? No. It's because he understood his shortcomings and that he, his own righteousness was not enough and he needed the righteousness of Yahuwah and he understood that. How did he prove it? By following Yahuwah's commands, by doing his laws, by, by understanding his precepts, by following his word from, from beginning to end, from first to last. That's how he was known. And that's how all the patriarchs, even before David, were declared righteous. Enoch, uh, Noah, um, Abraham, they were declared righteous. They believed Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. He understood the law. The law has been there from the beginning. The commandments have been there and the patriarchs knew them and they followed them and they were declared righteous. That's how Noah was declared righteous amongst the heathen in his, um, in his uh, day. So David is giving himself over forging a secure relationship with his creator in verse 8. And he says, I lift up my soul unto thee. Verse 9. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. So David is saying, teach me to do thy will. Something most of us or most people never ask. Teach me to do thy will. They are instead interested in doing their own will. Many people today are marching down the path that I'm my own person. This is my body. I can do what I want with it. Uh, this this uh, spirit of the Antichrist that is in people today is just overwhelming uh, to me. And when I witness it, and I'm witnessing it in almost every turn of every corner, every channel that you put on TV, every movie that you see, has some form of this, um, of this, uh, of this, uh, this antichrist spirit. So David's saying, "Teach me to do your will. Thou art my God, and thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness." Um, David wants to go on the right path. He does not want to be led astray. Verse eleven. Quicken me. O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Quicken me or revive me, David says. Many times we, uh, we need to be revived or set in motion or renewed or restored to life. And that's why we, we come before the throne and we pray and we, we plead and we lay our lives uh, bare to knowing that we are just mortal uh, and Almighty is immortal, and we want his spirit to be uh, within us, to restore us to life. And we often veer off course, um, even believers, we veer off course, or we lose our way, or we get lost. Um, that is why dependence on Yahuwah, dependence on his word, is our lifeline. Knowing the word, what the word says, and following it is our lifeline, because the world system that's being built for the Antichrist that's coming together right now and has been for quite some time um, and now more than ever getting closer and closer the the foundation is up the studs are up the plywood the the the, uh, the house is built basically they're putting the roof on and finishing up some of the shingles and some of the landscaping most of that systems already in place and there are so many people following uh, in fact, there's many billions of people in trouble as I write this uh, devotional uh, right now. As I speak right now, there are many billions of people in trouble. They are following uh, their leader's direction and listening to every single thing that is said and following it to the letter. Yeah, we're seeing uprisings. We're seeing... Um, uh, you know, nations rebelling, if you will, uh, against 
the system. But that's all planned because out of that, out of those ashes, uh, the new system will be put into place. So that is orchestrated. It's like a great orchestra, um, a great composer that's directing an orchestra. So these uprisings, they know it's going to happen. It's planned. It's it's they're crashing these countries, destroying the economy, destroying the will of the people. Uh, yeah, there's people revolting, and many people say, well, revolution is the only answer, and uh, you know out of the ashes we're going to make a new country and there's going to be this these great leaders that rise up and all of a sudden we're just going to follow uh, this magical path and, and it's going to be um, like the olden days no it's not the system that's being built now is the beast system it's the system that's going to come in things are going to get worse not better uh, understand that even uh, you know it's important as a believer to understand Things are going to get worse, not better, um, in this world. But Yahusha Jesus says, take heart. He, he controls everything. He is, will be back to judge uh, this evil world in his second coming. Um, so understand that if you're in him, if you, are, uh, if you have belief and faith and trust in him, and what he did on the cross, he's coming back for you, uh, no matter what, uh, no matter what. But you have to follow his, his, his way, his truth, and his life. And that's his word. You have to follow it. And not depend on our own righteousness, but rather on the righteousness that comes from above. Uh, these many billions of people, their very souls will depend on who and what they place their trust in. Unfortunately, many, many, much of the world, let's put it that way, is going to follow the way of the, uh, the Antichrist or the beast system that Revelation uh, chapter 13 talks about. They're not looking for the new Jerusalem to come down out of heaven. Uh, they're looking, uh, actually they're looking, they think they're looking at a system that's going to be gr this great utopia on earth, maybe that worships the environment uh, or, where all religions come together. And we could see that footprint being built right now by the current Pope. He's putting all the pieces of the puzzle into place uh, through his power and his prestige and his office in the Vatican and a new uh, one world religion is being formed, if you will. And many people love that. They want that. Uh, I think in 2023, you, uh, you're going to see that new, um, I think in Dubai, there's going to be this new area of worship where uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam come together and set the example for all the other faiths and all these uh, other religions and faiths are signing on to this. This is all documented. You can see it. Uh, you can go on YouTube and search it and see videos and talks on it. Uh, it's All the pieces are there for this one world uh, religion. Because in the end, uh, all will have to give allegiance to this, uh, to the Antichrist uh, system. And that's spelled out very clearly in Scripture. Um, so in Matthew uh, 7, 13 through 14, Yahusha Jesus says, you know, only a few find this, the narrow path. Only a few find it. So think about that. Much of the world that we see today, and many of us have family members that are marching down the wrong road. Do we want that to happen? No. It's sad. It's, it's, um, it's very sad to me. Uh, to see loved ones and friends and family and co-workers marching down uh, the wrong road depending on themselves or depending on this new world system that's coming. Uh, the final verse, verse 12 here, And of thy mercy cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. We are used to fighting our own battles or standing up for ourselves. You hear that 
so much today. You got to fight your own battles, Anthony. You know, you got to stand up for yourself. And that's true in many ways. Um, but however, in this fight, in this fight, in this fight that we're in, we need the strength and power of Yahuwah. Uh, we need to depend on His mercy to see us through this battle and defeat our enemies, uh, human and spiritual. Spiritual, excuse me. Um, the Bible talks about principalities and powers and darkness in the heaven in the heavenly realms or the other dimensions um, that our world leaders. Uh, have tapped into um, so we need both human strength to stand but more than that we need physical strength we need armor the armor is in the word Okay, we need to put on the armor and wield the sword of the spirit that scripture talks about but we need to know what it says and we need to be following and setting this example to be set apart like today is the Sabbath okay it is from creation it's what sets us apart it's how he knows his followers his believers yes you still need you need Yeshua uh, for forgiveness and you need him he's the only way to the Father yes but you are showing you who you are by being set apart. And so people are going to know that Anthony or whoever, name yourself, he's a follower of the Most High. He's set apart. That's how you'll be targeted. That's how we'll be targeted in this system. It says it quite clearly. We're putting ourselves out there. We're going to be targeted. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be battle. Okay? Many souls are afflicted as I write this, but how many will return from dependence on this world and ask Yahuwah for mercy through his son, Yahusha? How many will actually turn before then? Jesus says, Yahusha says in, in, uh, um, in Matthew chapter 24, um, that the word is going to go out the gospel, the good news is going to go out into all the world during the end times, during the tribulation even. Well, who's going to be delivering that? Believers. Believers that are standing shoulder to shoulder, being set apart, simultaneously being attacked by the evil one and this evil system that's put in place for him. Okay? But David says... And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. This evil system that's in place right now cannot touch your soul if you belong to the Most High through his son, Yahushua. It is a done deal. They cannot touch your and my soul. Only Yahushua can kill the soul in the lake of fire that's coming. And that's prepared for not only for uh, Satan, his followers also, and all unbelievers throughout history. Uh, think about the destruction that's going to take place. The pain, the anguish, the gnashing of teeth. He says, for I am thy servant. Are you his servant today? Think about what we talked about in this psalm. Take some time this weekend to reach your hands up to Yahuwah and plead with Him. Pray for direction, for guidance, for wisdom in these days that have come upon us because there's a great deception happening uh, as I speak. Uh, nations are playing us for fools. There's a big uh, act going on right now to bring about this new world order um, and everybody is in play all these nation states these leaders, these governors, these mayors that are pretending to fight each other uh, and do the will of the people so to speak here in the United States it's not going to happen it's not going to happen it's a ruse uh, Donald Trump's not coming back to save you no man 
is going to save you. In fact, it's probably part of the plan to have a nationalist leader and then leaders uh, more of on the liberal or socialist side coming together and banging heads, giving you two choices. That's how they do it. They'll give you two choices, right, left, Republican, Democrat, okay, conservative, liberal. What do you want to call it? Dependence on Yahuwah. Wisdom from above is what's going to get you through this. And it's only through his son, Yahushua, Jesus, that this can happen. Think about this psalm today. Think about what we went through uh, and, and, and studied. And please feel free to comment in the comments section. Anthony, signing off. Stay ready.